sign up sheet, uh, which uh, I'm told no one has signed up to speak on. Um, but if someone would like to speak, we'll certainly allow them to come forward. Uh, if you can uh, recognize, uh, if you could let folks at home know who you are and your address, and then if you please, um, we have a three-minute timer that we'll ask people to um, to abide by. So, okay, yes, sir. David Corbett, Fort Hill Terrace, Northampton. I just um, saw in the paper today you're going to uh, maybe approve the fireworks at Look Park again, and I was wondering about the animals there. What do they do with them? What kind of stress do they move them out? Do they leave them in the barns? That's a lot of torture for them, so I hope you find out before you approve the permit. And then I started thinking, what about the people who feed the ducks up there? If you enact the new laws and find people, that's a past practice. They're wildlife. You know, and we have a problem with wildlife in the city now, but I think you have more problem with the humans going in their territory and opening more and more of the woods to people to go in and frolic. When you look at preservation, land preservation, it is states in it as far as the uh, CPA that no blade of grass or anything can be cut in there. You're not supposed to disturb it. What are you going to do? What's happening to the wildlife, the herds out there? If people see the animals, something's wrong, unless you're a real sportsman. That's the only way. I've never seen a deer in my life when I've been out hunting, because I can't still sit still long enough. So I think if you start bringing the people back into the city, taking them out of the country, <coughs> and letting them go there and enjoy the nature only the way it exists. That'd be a benefit. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Corbett. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak uh, during the public comment session? Anyone at all who would like to speak? Okay. Uh, we have, uh, it's currently 7.03, and uh, we have uh, posted the regular meeting to begin at 7.05. Uh, so we'll need to adjourn briefly until 7.05 when we can open the regular meeting. So I'll briefly adjourn the meeting until we can uh, reach our uh, legally posted start time. Welcome back to the Northampton City Council meeting of May 3rd, 2012. Uh, it is now 7.05. I'll call to order the regular meeting and I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilor Adams? Here. Councilor Harding? Present. Councilor Dwight? Here. Councilor Daniel? Here. Councilor Lagarde? Present. Councilor Stockton? Here. Councilor Schwartz? Here. Councilor Tyson? Here. Okay, the first item on your agenda is the approval of your minutes of April 19th, 2012. Move to approve. Second. Is there any discussion of those minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 
Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. We have a proclamation uh, that I'd like to issue. This is a proclamation entitled Safe Prom and Graduation Season, May through June 2012. Whereas prom and graduation season mark an exciting and memorable time for Northampton students and families, and whereas these events are a time of great anticipation that should be enjoyed as safely and responsibly as possible without the use of alcohol or other drugs, and whereas heavy drinking is especially dangerous for teenagers whose brains are still developing and alcohol-related damage incurred at a young age can have long-term effects, and whereas 82% of Northampton parents have talked with their teenagers about alcohol and drugs, 75% of North Northampton parents believe that it is important to set clear family rules about underage drinking, and 90% of Northampton parents would be upset if another adult gave their teen alcohol, and whereas it is illegal for a person 21 or older to purchase or provide alcohol to a person under 21, and a criminal violation for the host of a party to allow a person under 21 to possess alcohol on their premises, and whereas city government encourage, encourages everyone to act responsibly for the health and safety of our whole community as we celebrate the milestone achievements of our young adults. Now therefore I, Mayor David J. Narkowitz, do hereby proclaim this to be a safe prom and graduation season in the city of Northampton. I encourage all community members to support parents and guardians in their ongoing commitment to keep their teenagers safe and healthy by setting clear rules and expectations about underage drinking and other drug use and to not purchase or provide alcohol for anyone under the age of 21. In witness whereof, I have set my hand and imprinted the seal of the city of Northampton this third day of May in the year 2012. I don't know if there's anyone here to respond to. Oh, Glenn, oh, excellent. Glenn is, uh, Glenn is here from the Prevention Coalition. We just wanted to um, introduce yourself quickly. And Yeah, I'm Glenn Johnson. I'm the coordinator of the Northampton Prevention Coalition. And um, just a few remarks. Um, so alcohol and drug use obviously is a problem for young people all year long. Um, but it's, and it's, and it's not just during prom and graduation series season and not just when you're a senior in high school. In fact, the problem starts earlier and sort of the earlier people start, the more likely they are to continue using and to continue using in adulthood. But it is a special concern now. And, and so it is important just to remind parents the important role they do play. I think a lot of times parents uh, get the message that it doesn't matter what they say, that young people don't care. And all of the research shows that young people really do care what you think. They care that you, if you express disapproval, they notice if you're monitoring them. It's important on prom night not to rent to your kid a hotel room or to, and to make sure you have a curfew and to, to let them know that you disapprove of drug use and to let them know that you're expecting them not to. And we actually were encouraged by, um, we did a survey of seniors a few years ago and found that the vast majority of them really felt that uh, prom and graduation could be celebrated fully without drugs and alcohol. And I, I think that it's just sort of helping them to, to make that dream a reality. <laughs> so thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, for the pro proclamation. And thank you, city councilors, for your support of this um, season. I'd like to present it to you for the Northampton Prevention Coalition. So. Thank you Thanks, Glenn. Thanks for the work. Okay, the next item on the agenda is on second reading, a resolution to amend the Constitution of the United States, and this is upon the recommendation of City Council President William H. Dwight, Councilor Jesse M. Adams, Councilor Maureen T. Carney, Councilor Pamela C. Schwartz, Councilor Marianne L. Labarge, and the Northampton Human Rights Commission. Whereas we the people adopted and ratified the United States Constitution to protect the free speech and other rights of people, not corporations, Whereas corporations are not people, but instead are entities created by the law of states and nations. Whereas for the past three decades, a divided United States Supreme Court has erroneously transformed the First Amendment into a powerful tool for corporations seeking to evade and invalidate the people's laws. 
Whereas this corporate misuse of the First Amendment and Constitution has reached an extreme conclusion in the United States Supreme Court ruling in Citizens United versus Federal Election Commission, whereas Citizen United versus Federal Election Commission overturned long-standing precedent prohibiting corporations from spending corporate general treasury funds in our elections, Whereas Citizen United versus Federal Election Commission unleashes a torrent of corporate money in our political process unmatched by any campaign expenditure totals in United States history. Whereas Citizens United versus Federal Election Commission purports to invalidate state laws and even state constitutional provisions separating corporate money from elections. Whereas Citizens United versus Federal Election Commission presents a serious and direct threat to our Republican democracy, whereas Article 5 of the United States Constitution empowers and obligates the people and states of the United States of America to use the constitutional amendment process to correct those egregiously wrong decisions of the United States Supreme Court that go to the heart of our democracy and Republican self-government, and whereas the people and states of the United States of America have strengthened the nation and preserved liberty and equality for all by using the amendment process throughout our history, including in seven of the 10 decades of the 20th century, and including to reverse seven erroneous Supreme Court decisions, Therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of Northampton, Massachusetts, acting in the spirit and history of our community, does hereby declare that we call upon the United States Congress to pass and send to the states for ratification a constitutional amendment to hold the words people, person, or citizen as used in the United States Constitution do not include corporations, limited liability companies, or other corporate entities established by the laws of any state, the United States, or any foreign state, reverse the Citizens United versus Federal Election Commission decision and to thereby restore constitutional rights and fair elections to the people. To that end, the mayor shall send copies of this resolution to Massachusetts State Representative Peter Cocott, Massachusetts State Senator Stanley Rosenberg, Governor Deval Patrick, United States Congressman Richard Neal, and United States Senators John Kerry and Scott Brown, the United States Senate Committee on the Judiciary, the U.S. House of Representatives Committee on the Judiciary, the United States Attorney General Eric H. Holder, Jr., and the President of the United States, Barack Obama. Move approval. Second. Okay, there's a motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? I don't know if one of the spot, uh, Councilor Schwartz didn't have an opportunity to speak to this um, last time. I don't know if you. Uh, well, having, I'm sorry I missed the last meeting. No, no. I will just say I think this is very important, and I'm proud to be part of weighing in on this necessary change. Okay. Is there any other discussion or debate? Uh, hearing none, I will ask the clerk to call the roll. <coughs> Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Freeman-Daniel? Aye. Councilor Barr? Yes. Councilor Speckley? Yes. Councilor Schwartz? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that has uh, now been adopted on second reading, and we will carry out the instructions of the council in uh, sending copies of that to the appropriate uh, authorities. The next item is a resolution, and this is upon the recommendation of the mayor. Whereas the city of Northampton receives community development block grant funds from the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, and whereas the city's entitlement grant amount for the program year 29, commencing on July 1, 2012, will be approximately $588,403, and whereas a needs assessment and review of the draft action plan has been conducted over the course of two public hearings in order to solicit public comments on utilization of CDBG resources, and whereas requests for proposals have been issued to identify programs and service providers to undertake eligible CDBG activities, and whereas an action plan has been developed to address needs within the city which the CDBG program can address, 
Now therefore be it resolved that the Northampton City Council endorses the CDBG Year 29 Action Plan to be submitted by Mayor David J. Narkowitz to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development for the program year beginning July 1st, 2012. Uh, and attached to that, you'll see there is a summary of the uh, program year 29 action plan activities, uh, which I can, for the public, I can review those, at least the agencies and, what the, and the amounts. Um, uh, if folks would like me to do that, if, okay. Uh, perhaps we should first have a motion. Uh, Move to approve. Okay, is there a second? second. Okay, so uh, this is, um, uh, let's see, uh, for housing activities, um, there's $176,000 which have been directed to housing activities, $20,000 to the Council on Aging Elder Home Repair Program, $26,000 to the Valley CDC Home Ownership Assistance Center, $130,000 to the New South Street Apartments Pro Property Improvements. Uh, under the Public Infrastructure Improvements Program, there's zero. Under the Public Facilities and Access Program, 399,861, uh, and $319,861 of that is applied to the Northampton Senior Center Debt Service, and 80,000 is applied to the James House Renovations. Under Economic Development Activities, $10,000 is allotted to the Valley CDC Micro Business Assistance Program, under public service, a total of $91,872 is allotted in the following manner. $8,600 to Casa Latina, Bridges for Latinos. $3,440 to Center for Human Development, Big Brothers and Big Sisters Mentoring Program. $13,772 for the Center for Human Development SRO Outreach Program. $8,365 for the Center for New Americans Skills and Job Assistance, $2,150 to the Massachusetts Fair Housing Center Fair Housing Program, $14,620 <coughs> to ServiceNet for the Grove Street Inn, $12,900 for ServiceNet Hampshire County Interfaith Cot Shelter, $2,150 to Mana Soup Kitchen, $2,580 to Community Action Generation Q, $2,580 to Community Action First Call for Help, $10,320 to Northampton Survival Center Emergency Food Pantry, $7,740 to the Literacy Project Passport to Success, and $2,655 to Community Legal Aid Homelessness Prevention Project, and under the Planning and Administration Budget, $117,680. And again, for a, uh, uh, let's, there's total here at the bottom, uh, FY13 CDBG allocation, 588,403. Um, so those are the programs. I know that the um, Committee on Social Services and Veterans Affairs worked with Peg Keller. Um, as well as some other community members to review all of these applications. I don't know if the chair or another member of that committee wanted to comment on that process. Um, yes, um, our council president, Bill Dwight, Councilor Tacey and I, um, and Peg Keller, we spent three days, March 12th, 13th, and the 14th, interviewing many applicants from like 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock at night we had some big decisions to make. We were cut money on the CDBG grant. It made us very, very difficult this year to work with what we had. We looked at food, shelter again, which was our priority. And there were many, many agencies who came forth and we just wanted to give everybody help, but we could not do that. But I think we did the best that we could with our interviews and gave the money to the best that we could for the agencies that we selected. And I think our council president probably could talk more about what we did. Um, I'd be glad to. I, I, um, for folks who don't know, HUD, the HUD money that comes to us is about the extent of the federal government's commitment to 
communities. And it's also the money that is dispersed is the extent of our commitment, personal, uh, the com city's commitment for the most part for social service programming. Um, a lot of people seem to think that the city administers and funds a lot of social service programming. We don't, and it's clearly reflected in this. $88,000 was left for us to um, pass out, and at some point we're getting to the point where the threshold's almost achieved, where the cost of administering the money that we are doling out to the, some of these agencies doesn't make it worth the award. Um, that one thing that these agencies do use this money for is to leverage money from other programs. The, I mean, clearly they're not sustaining programs on, on, on $1,200 or $2,000 or $2,500. Man, a soup kitchen <laughs> does not run on $2,500. So it's, uh, Council of Barge referred to the frustration, and and this has been ongoing. I mean, when I was back, you know, a quarter of a century ago, it feels like, was when I was first a councilor, we were we were bemoaning the, the pittance we were getting on community development block grant funds. Well, right now it's a political football in the federal government, and it as it's the Grover Norquist school of reduce it to the point where you can drown it in a bathtub. And there's some very cynical people in D.C. have decided that this money is a waste, and we can clearly tell you at the point of services that this actually is a sin, what's being allocated and what's being done as a political football. I'm just speaking out of the frustration that I think Councilor Tacey, Councilor Barge, uh, Peter Ives, uh, uh, Carol Reinhardt from the uh, Health and Human uh, from the Human Rights Commission and Peg Keller, among others, and I know this is true of the mayor, feel that, um, it, that there's we this is excruciating, and while at the same time we're very fortunate to have these programs doing the work that they do here, uh, we we would obviously feel a whole lot better if we had better awards for them. But different fight for a different day, I guess. <clears throat> Councilor Tacey? Yeah. Um, we all know that this used to be a lot bigger fund. It used to be a million dollars, and now we're down to nearly half of that. But food, as Councilor Labarge said, we focused on food and shelter and tried to, especially last year. Um, but last year, there was some 14% more. And uh, Carol Reinhart from the Human Rights Commission had persuaded me anyway um, to although I didn't want to, to step away a little bit from the food and shelter part of it. And as people were losing their access to, to legal aid, um, which is pretty important, um, she did persuade me um, to uh, uh, go along with the allocation for some money to the community legal aid. But it is the first time that I think in three years I've stepped away a little bit, not much, but from food and shelter. and. Um, so in your amendment of the Constitution, there's a menu of people here that could probably be approached um, with a letter to say, hey, um, this has gone down far enough. It was, it was cut 16% last year, 14% again this year. That's 30%. And who knows about next year? So if you're writing letters, thank you. Right. I, I, if if, if uh, the council is proposing a resolution to be voted on, I would I'd gladly co-sponsor that with them as a letter that would be drafted and sent to these the very same collection of people there, and in expressing our our disappointment, and dissatisfaction, and our hopes for more more the the community development block grant funds continue to grow and flourish as opposed to diminish and die. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Dwight, I would support that a hundred percent. Councillor. Uh, I just want to be clear about the process here. Um, this is the mayor's purview to to suggest to CDB to HUD how the expenditure should go. That is correct. But it's been past practice to share the granting or to share the RFP process with the Committee on Social Services and Veterans Affairs. And an expanded version that the committee plus some additional community members. Um, and I actually served on that committee when I was a counselor as well. And, and, um, and so these recommendations come to the mayor, to me, and I reviewed them with Peg Keller, and, I've, and I'm accepting the recommendations um, from that this committee set forward. But it is my decision in terms of how they're allotted, yes. 
And Thank I would just, if I would be allowed to add, just as an additional point of information, I did write both Senator Kerry and Senator Scott Brown on behalf of the city uh, at the end of last year regarding the CDBG funding um, and the impact that it was going to have on Northampton. So I, I've at least reached out in that regard, but certainly the more the more the more the merrier. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just a minor point I would add to that <laughs> list: the uh, Republican chairs of the Appropriations Committee. Right. And there's one other committee because that's really where it got stopped. There was actually a great deal of support still from uh, even Republicans in Congress, but it was stopped by the leadership of the appropriations. So if you go back and look at what has been happening, and I'm afraid if we look at future years, um, it's going to get worse before it gets better. So. Councilor. <coughs> Questions. Um, new South Street Apartments, how long is the period of affordability currently? Uh, I believe that... Um, the affordability was is slated to run out in the next was slated to run out in the next few years, and this is a 25 year extension. Yeah. I don't know the exact date, but it was uh, it was seen as very beneficial to get this extension. Um, and actually, this um, these improvements were also part of a settlement that occurred as a result of the lawsuit regarding the hotel as well with that property. And so and so these improvements are also part of that settlement well uh, but the idea was that the uh, we would use these funds to help pay for improvements um, uh, to help them with their uh, you know, capital program on the building in exchange for that they would extend the um, they would extend the, the, the affordability for another 25 years so I just I don't know the exact date but it's very it's coming up very soon yeah. and the senior center debt service is that amount the amount the total amount for this year's debt service uh, uh, for the senior center, yes, and I believe we have two more years of of that. I think we have two more years of at least CDBG funded uh, CDBG debt service of that particular facility, um, and we can get the the, the uh, get you the exact stuff here. But that's that's what it's for. Yes, and that was the plan when the facility was proposed that we would use um, that we would use. Uh, CDBG funds to pay the debt service. Thank you. Just a point of it, that was a direct result of the lawsuit, 130000 It was um, two $65,000 payments. Mm -hmm. And um, we did one two years ago, and then we did the year, and then we came up with the last one, I think, this year. So. And the uh, uh, finance director just clarified that we have uh, the payment in 2013, 2014, and 2015 on the senior center from these CDBG funds. Mm -hmm. oh. three years. Yeah, so it, it cuts down in half at that point. So, uh, and then we'll be absorbing it on our debts. On, the city will be absorbing it on its debt service, which we've planned for. Okay. So that's the um, that's that's uh, uh, that's the recommendation that um, I'm asking for the council's endorsement of. Uh, Councilor Freeman Daniels. Uh, I want to. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for sharing your process with the uh, committee and with the, with the city council. Oh, so I, I'm prepared to support this. Thank you. The and then when the when the general excuse me oh, Councilor Tacy, <laughs> when the general fund picks up this one, it goes until 2026. It does 2026? Right. Okay, and it starts off at about 220,000, or I forgot 220. We can get you that. We okay. can find out that right, information for you. Yeah, I know. I'll call. Unless you can pull it up immediately. But we can yeah. try to pull it up. The, oh. the debt service in 2013 is um, 319000 Yep. Okay. But most of the CDBG is paying, the CDBG yep. is paying for that. But I was interested in how much the city would pick up in 2015 or 16. In 16, it will be down to 295 Okay. Thank you. Any other questions about uh, this recommendation? So um, I would ask then for a vote. Um, uh, all those in favor of adopting the resolution, say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank you very much. It's money. Okay. I have um, next roll call on think, that. Shouldn't we have a roll call? It is. No, it's, um, it's just well, a it's actually a recommendation. Okay. So I'm, yeah. it's not, we're not actually, you're not borrowing, appropriating, or authorizing. So. Um, can call. Well, if you'd like a roll call, sure. I can take a roll sure. call. Just, it's okay. 
Unanimous vote. Okay. I believe it's unanimous. Um, so the uh, next item is uh, one minute announcements. Uh, Councilor Spector. Yes, I just want to announce the, <laughs> the, the North Hamptons, North Hampton High School a cappella group will be singing Sunday at the Red Sox game. They'll be singing the uh, anthem. So I encourage everyone who's not at the game to perhaps watch it on TV because it's quite an honor for them to be doing that. Councilor LaBarge. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just would like to announce, and I know I placed on each one of the counselors' desk a little flyer, and it's um, <laughs> RK Finn Ryan Road Elementary School, and it's an inaugural auction, and it's called A Starry Night. And it's a fun night. It, it's, it's just absolutely fabulous. Um, and all the proceeds are going to the RK Fen Ryan Road Elementary School. It will be held on May 11th, 2012 at 6.30 p.m. at the Garden House at Wood Park. And it will be featuring Doug Kimball, who's Kimball's Auction and Estate Services. And there is a bid on gift certificates, local products, travel services, and much, much more. And they said the food is scrumptious, and you can get the tickets online, and plus you can get the tickets at Ryan Road School. So I would appreciate it if any of the counselors are free that night to please come and support. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Casey. And let's not forget Saturday the 5th, the electronics recycling at the, by the Yes Computers in the parking lot from 9 to 1. Um, I don't have it right in front of me with the list of sponsors, but um, I know WRSI is the one that has taken the lead, I think, um, and have contacted the Transportation and Parking Commission on this. So it ought to be something substantial. Just a quick, can I ask a question on that? Counselor. Just when you say electronic products, are those just is it the whole range of them? Could it be an electric fan, a toaster, or any? It can be television? an old TV. Great. Thanks. Um, monitors, cell phones, anything. So um, I'm looking forward to it. I got some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of it. And it's all free. So thank you. Are there any other one minute announcements? Okay. Um, we do have a poll petition hearing at 8, but we'll have to go past and come back to that when we reach 8 o'clock. So then I will move to the new appointment of city boards, committees, and commissions. And these are ones that are recommended by the Committee on Appointments and Evaluations meeting of April 9th, 2012. Uh, would the council wish to take these one at a time as a group? Take them, I'll read them as a group and then you can. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so the first appointment um, is to the Arts Council, uh, uh, Joan Axelrod <coughs> Contrada, 10 Pine Street, Flor Florence, a term from April 2012 to two April 2015, and Carl Russo of 13 Park Street in Florence, term from April 2012 to April 2015. To the Board of Public Works, K. Christopher Hellman, 218 Elm Street, a term from March 2012 to March 2015. Committee on Disabilities, Eleanor M. Rennell, Associate Member, 81 Conn Street, Northampton, a term of April 2012 to April 2015. To the Conservation Commission, Stephen Souter, full member, 65 South Street, number six, Northampton, a term of March 2012 to March 2014. Northampton Energy and Sustainability Commission, Christina Hodges, 6 Awaga Avenue, Northampton, term to expire March 2015. Housing Partnership, Tony B. Hostat, 28 Fruit Street, Northampton, term April 2012 to April 2015. Rachel Taylor Doward, 29 North Maple Street, Florence, term April 2012 to April 2015. Human Rights Commission, Jordana Amato, 58 Fern Street, Florence, term April 2012, April 2015. Vijay Prashad, 281 Prospect Street, Northampton, term April 2012 to April 2015. Rick Hart, 68 Leonard Street, Leeds, term to expire March 2015. To the Planning Board, 
Carla Youngblood, 46 Rockland Heights Road, Northampton, term to expire March 2017, and this is an associate member. To the Tree Committee, Andrew Putnam, 134A South Street, Northampton, a term of April 2012 to April 2015. These are all of the appointments that have come back to you from the Appointments and Evaluations Committee. Motion to approve. Okay, a second. A motion to approve and a second. Um, and I would note that uh, at least one of the applicants is here in the audience, uh, Mr. Hellman, and I would recognize the Chair of Appointments and Evaluations. Well, first I want to say that Mr. Hellman not only is here tonight, but he came last time. So he holds a record. And I'd like to thank him for coming in, and I'd like us all to recognize him. If, um, and so we... Um, we did a lot of appointments this time, and a lot of interviews, and a lot of. I want to thank you for for making the process um, move forward as smoothly as it did. And not only on um, these did we interview these folks, but if we weren't able to, we then uh, called them, and they were all great candidates. Um, I don't know if anybody else wants to say anything. It was on the committee, but I was really impressed with the group of candidates coming forward. Just nodding. Yes, it, it, it makes you feel proud about Northampton. It, is, is there anyone else we're missing who's here who was part oh, of this group who no. we approved? Uh, Andrew oh, sorry, Andrew. Andrew. Sorry. Great. Thanks for coming. Any other questions or comments about these new appointments? Okay. Councilor Freeman Daniels, you look like you have a question. Yeah. Um, I, I, I trust my fellow councilors um, implicitly, but I'm a little concerned that we're making this approval before we actually see the minutes of the previous meeting. Um, it's tough for me to vote aye when I don't know the, what was discussed at a, at a particular meeting. So, okay, I, I would make a move that we postpone till the next council meeting when the minutes are presented. Uh, Councilor Labarge. I really have a problem with that. I think this has been a procedure that we've been doing for many, many years. We work very hard interviewing these applicants that come in, and there is due trust of our interviewing them. And on the minutes, which our counselor, Pamela Schwartz, does do the minutes on it, I feel the way we are doing it is the appropriate way to go. Uh, counselor. Specter and then Councilor Clay. Yeah, just two things. One is the history of why this committee was evolved. And one of the reasons it evolved was so that here are people volunteering to be on a, on a committee. And it, there were some times in the past when what would happen is the person would come to the council meeting in order to be approved. And first of all, there are many people who would back off from that who don't want to be questioned in a public setting and be on TV. Um, and so therefore, it's decided to do this in a more intimate, private setting where we'd have the, the minutes. So that was one reason it was done in, in this particular way. And we have a, um, a standing agreement with when you look, not only do, it, do we do the interview, because the interview is kind of just an extra insurance policy. <coughs> People provide a, an application that everybody can look at. So when we go ahead and do the interviewing on this, it's just a way to make sure, it's, in part, we're often having a dialogue with the person. It's not like a job interview. We're actually very, we, with, when they come in, we're actually thanking them a lot for being on the committee. We're asking them, do they have any questions about what it's gonna be like? So it doesn't quite have the sense of, you know, okay, we're gonna turn a lot of people down. We are looking at times, I think in the eight years I've been on this committee, maybe once or twice, we looked at, and those were for logistical reasons. The person didn't understand that the meetings were in the evening, they had to attend all of them, they couldn't, you know, they couldn't walk into this only going to half of them. So I think, for one, I would like to thank everybody who applies, and we have quite a hard time getting people to <coughs> fill all the slots. So that's kind of historically where it's come. The other piece on this is that, just logistically, we start to have some of these committees that don't have a quorum. So what happens is, we get a referral, it's a couple weeks before that referral comes to the council meeting. It gets referred, our meeting is once a month, and you can be looking at six weeks or two months when it comes back here again to be approved. And that's been a problem in the past. And I would therefore hate to have it then be, okay, now we're gonna vote on the minutes. Now one thing I would suggest, the minutes may not have been 
approve, but we submit them from our committee, but they're certainly open and, and people can read exactly. them. But I think the main piece of information people should look at is the application. And any counselor is welcome. I would suggest you read the application before they come to the committee meeting. If you have any questions or concerns, either come to the committee meeting or you can call me as chair and I'll raise those questions and concerns. So I had Councillor uh, Dwight and then um, Councillor Large. Um, <clears throat> actually, I don't, I think Councillor Freeman Daniels' um, concern is a legitimate concern and, and it's also been expressed by Councillor Murphy. And it's actually part of the process that clearly needs review. Um, I think, you know, we had this discussion when we were discussing the charter about informed decisions based on, on the deliberation of the subcommittees. We do, you know, by and large, we do extend a great deal of faith and trust uh, in other counselors who serve in the subcommittee, but it's, it's appropriate. And, and I think this is actually, this is not, it's not so much a procedural problem, it's actually, it's a technology problem, which I think we can circumvent. And we can, with some work, and, and I'm in the process of investigating this various uh, um, uh, apps uh, for uh, document tracking so that everyone will have access to those minutes the minute the minutes are posted, even though they're not approved. But I think, I, I don't think that's, I'm not going to project this, but I don't think that's Councilor Freeman Daniels' concern whether it's approved or not. He just wants to see the disposition of the, of the deliberation. So with that said, I think when we're coming into this, once, the budget, once we survive the budget, the next project is to review the, the rules, performance, and committees of the council. And uh, this will clearly be one of the things, is making sure that we get the minutes in, in a prompt fashion so that we can do what we're charged to do, which is open and clear deliberation of the process. So I, I, I'm going to vote to approve this tonight and not, uh, but at the same time, I, I do want to acknowledge that I don't think this is a frivolous uh, concern or request. Councilor Barge? No, I think um, Councilor Spector put it exactly the way I feel also. I am just very proud that we have so many residents in this city who come forth and volunteer their time. And I'm talking about a lot of hours that they put in volunteering on our different committees. So I don't have a problem with the way it's being done. Councillor Tacey? Yeah, I, I, it's not like we're passing the budget that we haven't seen, like somebody's asking to vote on a budget that hasn't been produced yet. Um, and it, the volunteerism in the city of Northampton, I'm going to say, is, is pretty healthy. Um, a lot of times we do have some difficulty getting people to apply for these different boards and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as the uh, minutes go, I might like to also see the minutes, but that's not going to stop me from voting to approve on a track record of appointments and evaluations committee that I find to be outstanding. Um, so I, I intend to approve it. Uh, I guess I will return to Councilor Freeman Daniels. Do you intend to make a motion? My motion will die from lack of second. So uh, what I I'll, what I will say though, thank you for uh, recognizing me, is that uh, this is I, I basically, Councilor Dwight said with more words what I was what I would have said in fewer, which is that in general I'm not comfortable voting on things for which I haven't seen the minutes. Uh, I've said it before. I'll say it again, and uh, I don't have any objection uh, to any particular person here uh, that were that were asked to approve, but. Uh, so, and, and I can comfortably vote no because it's going to be approved anyway, and this is my, one of the reasons why I think we really need to deal with the council rules. Okay. Are there any other uh, comments about this group of appointments? And I guess I just would join folks in thanking the folks who've put their names in to volunteer for these positions. And um, okay, so all those in favor then of approving these appointments, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Any abstentions? Okay, so uh, thank you for that. Uh, the next item is a reappointment to a city board committee and commission. This is a reappointment of Thomas Parent of 57 Beacon Street in Florence, uh, term from June 2010 to June 2013. Move to approve. Second. And I also would like to suspend rule 30. Second. Okay, there's been a motion made and seconded to rule, uh, suspend Rule 30. Uh, 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so rules are suspended. Uh, so the, uh, the question then is on the um, reappointment of Tom Parent to the Rec Commission. Is there any comment on that from the committee? Oh, yes, um, I think we need to look at um, Mr. Parent's record, 25 years as a member on the Recreation Committee and also 15 years as chair. So I want to thank him for all his service and his volunteer work that he has done for our city of Northampton. Okay. Councilor. This guy is a huge asset, a huge asset to the, uh, to the board. And, um, I intend to vote yes. Okay. Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of Mr. Parent's uh, reappointment to the Recreation Commission say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, the next set of appointments are to be referred to the Committee on Appointments and Evaluations. The first is to the Housing Partnership, Patty McGill of 103 South Street, Northampton a term of May 2012 to May 2015. To the Recreation Commission, Dan Smith of 597 West Hampton Road in Florence, a term 2012 to 2015. Thomas Dunphy of 6 Chesterfield Road in Leeds, a term of June 2012 to June 2015. And to the Transportation and Parking Commission, Richard E. Cooper, of 136 South Main Street in Florence, a term of May 2012 to May 2015. Move to refer to appointments and evaluations. Second. Okay. Any discussion on that motion? Uh, Council. Just one piece. I would like to suggest since primarily, <clears throat> otherwise our note taker at the meeting, Pam Schwartz, will be overwhelmed, that what we base our decisions are primarily are on the application. So we'll submit these as part of the notes from every meeting because that's what we're talking about and reviewing. And um, so I would encourage all counselors to read the application before we take a vote that comes forward because that is really the basis of what people need to look at. Okay. Any other discussion about the motion to refer? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so those will go to your appointments and evaluations committee. The next item is a license, and this is for a fireworks display permit, the Northampton Family Fourth Committee uh, for June 23rd, 2012, rain date June 24th, 2012, at 9.30 uh, p.m. in Look Park, and the applicant is Priscilla Ross of the Northampton Fireworks Committee, uh, 40 Key Street, Florence, and uh, Priscilla is here this evening if you'd like to recognize her and I'd first entertain a motion to approve the permit. Move to approve. Second. Second. Okay. And a Move motion. to recognize Ms. Ross. Okay. Second. Is there a second? All those in favor of recognizing say aye. 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 Okay. Good evening. I'm thrilled to be here tonight for the second year in a row. Um, I do want to make a correction. It is the Nan Northampton Family Fourth Committee, not the Northampton Fireworks Committee. Huh. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's what was on the application. That is the Atlas Pyrovision seems to oh. get that wrong. So, okay. um, the Northampton Family Fourth Committee is uh, in its second year of planning the second annual Northampton Family Fourth celebration. Last year was a tremendous success. It was what I envisioned that it would be in three or four years. I can't believe how well it went. Every PTO, every school was represented with uh, carnival booths and games. Um, we had hamburgers and hot dogs for sale and uh, live music, four bands, four local bands played, and then just before and then during the fireworks, the Northampton High School, JFK Middle School, and Florence Community Bands, representatives of, played together. A hundred musicians were playing the um, 1812 Overture as the fireworks went off, and it was marvelous. So I thank you for your approval. And we are, yes, the animals. Yes. They're moved out. Almost all the animals, all the birds are um, taken away. And any other animals that can be removed without being drugged or hurt by um, moving them are also moved away. Councilor Tacey. And how many of those bands did you play in last year? <laughs> <laughs> just, just the, actually, I didn't play in any. Oh, no, I played in one. Yeah, I did. I played in one, and I'll play uh, the Bum Steers. And how many instruments did you play? I just played flute. That's all? <laughs> That's it. Oh. 
It was a slow I'm, day for you? Yeah, it was a slow day. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. And Any, thank you for doing this. Councillor Carney? I just to say it was a fantastic event last year. Really enjoyed it, and I'm just very comforted by the fact that the animals are uh, at another location. I know how disturbing that can be for wildlife. So thank you for letting us know. Is there any uh, other questions about the permit before you? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the fireworks permit say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. The next item on the agenda are a series of license renewals for 2012. Uh, that we have a set of second-hand dealers. Uh, we have uh, Sid Vintage at 279 Main Street, New York Shop Exchange at 32 Masonic Street, and Modern Myths LLC at 34 Bridge Street, number four. And we also have a uh, taxi cab license to Peter Pan Bus Lines doing business as the Green Cab Company, one Roundhouse Plaza. Move them as a group. Okay. Second that. All right. So uh, those have all been moved as a group, and you've got the information from the uh, from the clerk on those, uh, including on the uh, green cab. Is there any discussion or questions about those? Okay. Hearing none. All those in favor of approving uh, the licenses, say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So those are um, all set. I'm looking to see if we have anyone from the utility company. I don't see anyone here yet. Um, we're just a few minutes away from the. Um, okay, so we'll do some of the minutes. Um, we're going to move over. We'll we'll pass by finance committee with your indulgence, and we'll approve some minutes because uh, we're right up at eight o'clock near the uh, uh, near the petition hearing so we have reports of committees we have the committee on appointments and evaluations minutes of march 12th 2012 we have the finance committee minutes of march 27th 2012 we have the transportation and parking commission minutes of march 20th 2012. And we'll okay second second is there any discussion of these okay hearing none uh, all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed any abstentions? Okay. Um, okay. I think we'll just continue Do moving with some of these other items until we get to eight o'clock, and then unless unless uh, you want an entertainment prospect of a recess. Well. Uh, uh, can I have one other petition which needs yeah, let's do uh, the petition. needs to be referred so sure. we can have sure. that one off the list. Um, so uh, the next item is a street discontinuance. This is a petition for discontinuance as a city street uh, parcels H1 and H2, the hammerhead portion of Village Hill Road. And these require a referral to the planning board and the board of public. We'll refer. Okay. Second. Second. Um, any discussion of this motion to refer? Would, would this also go to the joint committee as well? It's not specifically uh, the, the for ordinance to, requires it go for hearings by the board of public works and the planning board. So I would like to move that it also go to the joint uh, council board of public works committee. Second. Okay. Okay. So uh, you're Thank like you. to add that to okay. the. Uh, okay. Um, the, uh, other additions, any other referral locations you'd like to add? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, all right. Um, just looking to see if we have. Mayor? Yes. Could we possibly do that one ordinance on the yes. handicap? We certainly could. We can move down to the ordinance. Yes. Okay, so we have on second reading an ordinance. Uh, this is um, to uh, this is uh, to amend section 312-117, schedule uh, 16, handicapped parking, and it's to add handicapped parking a location 312-117 uh, on the westerly side from a crosswalk at Main Street in Leeds to a point 146 feet south,
continuing to a point 169 feet south. And this is upon the recommendation of Lieutenant Ken Watson of the Northampton Police Department. Move to approve. Move to approve. Second. 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 Okay. Is there any uh, discussion or explanation on this? Uh, this is again on second reading. Okay. Uh, hearing none. All those in favor on second reading say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So that is now approved. Okay. Can we do updates from uh, the uh, council president or committee chairs? We would like possible? to do that now. We can certainly follow the order as, as the council instructs me to. Are there any updates from the council uh, president at this time? Well, I do, but it's kind of jumping the gun here. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we may. Okay. okay. I, I want to I will do it after the budget presentation. Okay. okay. So yeah. listen, you know, why don't we have a recess for a brief recess before okay, so we'll we recess go, before we'll the eight o'clock public hearing. Right. Um, <laughs> it's a four minute recess, so we'll recess until eight PM. Sounds like a plan. Thank you.
Welcome back to the May 3rd, 2012 meeting of the Northampton City Council. We'll resume on the agenda and we have scheduled uh, for this evening uh, at 8 p.m. Uh, a petition for poll and wire locations by National Grid for North Farms Road. I would first ask for a motion to open the public hearing. So Move to second. open up the public Okay, it's motion made and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we've opened the public hearing. And I detect the presence of a representative from National Grid uh, who can, uh, you could just identify yourself. And sure, sure. Lisa Jasinski, National Grid. Good evening. Um, I'm here to request permission for, to set a poll. It's going to be used for the, um, it's a stub poll. It's going to be used to support existing uh, line extension that goes off into the woods up on North Farms Road. It's adjacent to house number 661, I think, is the house that it's next to. I'm sorry, the poles across the street from house 661. The existing um, equipment goes up along the side of their house into the woods to feed another home. Okay. That's it. Um, before I open it to questions, is there anyone here in the, from the public who also wishes to speak in favor or in opposition to this particular poll petition? Okay, hearing none, I'll entertain questions from counselors. Are there any questions from counselors on this being presented? Mm -hmm. Okay, hearing none, I would ask for a motion to close the public hearing. So, so move. Uh, Section made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the public hearing is closed. I would then entertain a motion to approve the petition for poll. Move to approve. Second. Second. Motion made by Councilor LaBarge, seconded by Councilor Adams. Any discussion? Councilor Texas, my word, I, I visited the site. It uh, does not appear to be anything uh, at all controversial. So, okay. thank you. Great. Okay, so all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? None. Thank you. Thank you. I love those easy ones. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. So long. Okay, so uh, we'll now uh, return to the regular agenda. I will um, recess the city council meeting uh, and we'll move into the finance committee and I'll ask the clerk to call the roll of the finance committee. Present. Here. Here. Present. Here. Present. Here. Okay, so uh, the first item on the <clears throat> finance committee agenda is a uh, financial order and this is upon the recommendation of the mayor and the finance committee. Order that, whereas the Northampton Energy and Sustainability Commission, through administering energy policy in the Sustainable Northampton Plan and the city's climate change protection commitments, has and will continue to identify and secure significant revenue from renewable energy certificates, and the, and, and the NESC continues to champion increased levels of energy efficiency and energy resource sustainability and guard against effects of energy resource disruption slash depletion and climate change throughout the city, and whereas the City Council, in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half, may authorize the establishment of a revolving fund for the Northampton Energy and Sustainability Commission for such revenue generated by city energy improvements. Now, therefore, be it ordered that the City Council hereby authorizes an energy and sustainability revolving fund in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half for fiscal year 2012, Receipts received but not expended in FY 2012 shall be carried over to FY 2013 if this fund is reauthorized for fiscal year 2013 by City Council. Said receipts will include payments from the sale of renewable energy certificates and renewable energy or greenhouse gas, e.g. carbon, credits or other emission credits and utility rebate payments, requests for which will be presented to the mayor for approval on a project by project basis. Receipts may also include gifts from individuals and organizations. Expenditures may be made to pay materials, expenses, and contracted services associated with projects, programs, 
of policies that increase levels of energy efficiency and energy resource sustainability and guard against effects of energy resource di disruption, depletion, and climate change in all of Northampton's public and private sectors, e.g., municipal, business, commercial, residential, agricultural, and institutional, consistent with the goals of the Sustainable Northampton Plan, the City's climate change protection commitments, and other City plans and goals. The Director of Central Services, with the approval of the NESC and Mayor, shall be authorized to expend from the fund for the stated purposes. No further appropriation shall be required, provided, however, that no expenditure shall be made in excess of the balance of the fund, nor shall total expenditures for the fiscal year exceed the sum of $75,000. I would entertain a motion in finance. Move to approve. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, and uh, just to remind my colleagues on the Finance Committee, we had a presentation on this. We discussed it before it was introduced. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and essentially, this is to create a, um, uh, a new revolving fund so that as we now begin to accrue some of these energy credits from some of the uh, uh, solar projects that we've done around the city, uh, that we have a place that we can then deposit these credits so that they can be reinvested in, um, in energy efficiency programs around the city uh, that NESC, uh, the, the Energy and Sustainability Commission, has been working on uh, in accordance with the uh, Sustainable Northampton Plan. Uh, so that's the purpose of setting up this revolving fund so that we have a place to, uh, to uh, deposit it. Council. I'll ask a question that I think I know the answer to, but how much of a role did this Commission play in the ESCO. Uh, well, the the ESCO was um, brought before the commission and discussed with the commission yeah. in terms of as a concept, uh, but in terms of the actual sort of financial details and those kinds of day to day administration of it, I don't know that um, we were that closely involved. I believe we endorsed it. Uh, mm -hmm. We endorsed the concept. I was on the commission at that yep. point. Um, but in terms of the actual administration and contracting, that was performed more by central services and the energy officer. Okay. I, I, I was just curious. Yep. I didn't know if they were had a seat at the table with the, with the whole ESCO. Or, okay. Thank you. Any other questions about this in the Finance Committee? Okay. And uh, I think as it was referred to, um, uh, th this will also um, – you know, we'll have an order to continue this in FY13. We're creating it now in FY12 because we have some residual funds in FY12 that we want to put into this new fund, and then this fund will be renewed for FY2013. So that's the uh, rationale for this. Okay. Seventy-five thousand bucks comes from. Uh, what that says is it it shall not exceed the uh, sum of seventy-five thousand. So it's a cap on what can be expended right. from the fund. Landfill, gas, things such as that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, then all those in favor in finance uh, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So this will go out to the full city council. Okay. The next item, uh, this is a financial order. This is upon the recommendation of the mayor and the finance committee. This is ordered that the sum of $115,887 B and hereby is transferred from the receipt reserved account for ambulance fees to the following accounts EMS regular salaries, PS, $75,000, EMS overtime, PS, $10,000, EMS weekend differential, PS, $650, EMS holiday pay, PS, $4,000, EMS third party billing, OM, $7,500. EMS supplies, O&M, $10,000. EMS training and seminars, O&M, $3,000. EMS equipment, O&M, $5,000. EMS office supplies, O&M, $300. And EMS medical expenses, O&M, $437. And again, the total is one fifteen eight eighty seven. Is there a approved. Approved. Is there a second? Okay. Uh, the motion's made and seconded. Uh, and I know that uh, uh, Deputy Chief Norris is here this evening. I'd like to make a motion to okay. recognize Chief Norris. to recognize. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor on finance, say aye. 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 Okay. Good evening, Deputy Chief. Aye. Good evening. Um, 
Again, we're here for the final transfer of this fiscal year and actually the final transfer going forward. Um, as everyone's well aware, um, at your last meeting, the city chose to uh, allocate the funds on a one-time yearly basis like all the other departments, so we no longer will have to go through this quarterly process here like we're doing tonight for the last time. Um, but uh, other than that, you know, when we started this program uh, well over five years ago now, um, in the era of financial transparency and everything else in fiscal oversight, I think it did serve its purpose. It gave um, this body an opportunity to um, ask questions and kind of get a good perspective as, as to where the EMS program is going. Um, uh, please don't lose sight of the fact that uh, you know, going forward, just because we're changing the way that uh, the funding is going to be done, that uh, if you have any questions any time, uh, please feel free to reach out and uh, give me a call and let me know. But with that being said, uh, is there any questions? Uh, this, this transfer here is like we've always done at the end of the fiscal year, just to clean things up and get us through through uh, June 30th. Council LaFarge. Yes. Um I want to thank you again of how you have put in the medical expenses and the breakdowns on it every time that you have come to do this transfer. And I thank you for doing that. It's right there. It explains where that money is going. Yeah, and that, and that was the goal. I hope that helped. Um, again, probably almost two years ago now, um, we started doing that detailed memo. Um, just to give your body an opportunity to look at it and get a better understanding of what those funds were going to be used for. Um, so uh, that was the whole purpose and goal, and um, I, I think it worked well. Okay. Just really, really briefly, uh, training and seminars. Can you just just touch that? Yep. Um, that line item and EMS is essentially geared towards. Um, this time of year, you see a lot of people doing online training uh, that's required by the state for their certifications. So, for example, if someone is going to do some continuing education credits online, there's a fee to take that training. Um, when people do training for their annual or um, biannual refresher trainings, there's a fee for that training program. So that training and seminars line item is to pay for training programs for our personnel to attend. <clears throat> and a, a question that, that, that often comes up, um, people ask me, we pay for the training of the firefighters, <clears throat> but they cannot just leave if they've been trained and they, <clears throat> they say, well, what happens if we train these people and they just take off? Um, it's in the contract or, or in the contract that they have to pay back for the training that they have acquired, if they don't stay past a certain date, is that correct? No. Um, you see, that that's always a concern, whether it's in this city for police and fire or across the state, across the country. Um, right now, there's there's nothing in the contract that states that anyone has to stay for a certain period of time. Um, essentially, they can get the training. Um, a good example is sending them to the State Fire Academy. We can send people to the State Fire Academy. They can get their 12-week training, and if they so choose to go somewhere else after that training is complete, there's nothing in the contract that um, can stop us from saying no. So, so we can pay to train somebody. They can just leave us. Is that that's correct? Yes. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Council Thank you. Arch. Yes, and if I can recall, you are correct. When our um, Chief Sinkowitz came aboard through our budget hearing last year, he did mention about the training and the same problem where police officers would go through their training, but if a job came up on the outside, they're gone. Yeah, and, and by no means do I want to speak for the police department, but you see uh, it occur many times uh, for people going to possibly the state police. That's um, it. Fire departments, uh, fire personnel, they can go to other departments, whether it's across the state or, or in, a, in another state. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> have we seen that in, this, in, in Northampton with the fire department or not? Uh, it's been relatively low. Um, we have seen it a little bit more than in years past because when we started with the EMS, we, when we did the hiring, we started seeing an influx of applications, not just from the immediate area, but from a broader range. Mm -hmm. And they would stay for a few years, and whether it didn't work out or family issues, or whatever, you would see 
less than a handful of people uh, go back to where they originally came from. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Are there any other questions for Chief <coughs> about this transfer? Um, and I guess I would ask other counselors, not on finance, whether you would want him to stay for the regular meeting or whether. No. Councilor Dan. I just want to thank you again, Deputy Chief, for the, your presentations, your quarterly presentations, and, and the, the detail that you're able to give us. Thank you. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. And, and again, um, by, by all means, going forward, even though we've kind of made it into one budget, um, if there's ever any questions, please don't hesitate to um, track me down. Okay. Thank you very much, Deputy Chief. Yep. Thank yep. you. <laughs> okay, so any other questions about this in finance? Okay, so all those in favor of recommending this to the full council say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstention? Okay, so this will, um, this will come back to the full council. Uh, the financial updates. Um, in terms of FY 2012, uh, we don't actually have any updates for you. We're obviously, uh, you know, in the final... Uh, Slide path here to the end of the fiscal year, um, and so we'll keep you apprised as uh, as we get toward the end. Uh, we're obviously working with departments around uh, them closing out the end of their budgets and trying to monitor, continuing to monitor spending and hiring through that process. So we'll keep you up to date, um, and when we know more about how that's going to close out. The next item is uh, uh, my presentation of the FY 2013 budget. So we'll. Uh, we have budget books for the council to pass out. Um, and I will um, I will read the um, uh, read a message to the city council in terms of presenting it to you. Um, this is dated May third, two thousand and twelve, uh, to the honorable members of the city council. I am pleased to submit for your consideration a proposed $95,780,717 fiscal year 2013 budget for the City of Northampton. This includes our $79,362,500 general fund together with the enterprise funds for water, $7,136,210, sewer, $5,517,720 and solid waste, $3,764,287. Northampton weathered the economic recession that buffeted our city and state better than many communities through sound fiscal management and with the support of our employees and taxpayers. Economic recovery by state and local governments continues to lag behind recovery in the broader economy, however, and Northampton is no exception, as evidenced by the fiscal challenges we continue to face in FY 2013. Revenues in the form of local taxes, interest income, new growth, and federal and state aid continue to be outpaced by faster rises in fixed costs for health care, pensions, school choice and charter school sending tuitions, capital debt service, fuel and materials, and collective bargaining agreements. Many of these same, quote, mandatory spending, unquote, pressures underpin the structural issues in our state's budget, resulting in little or no increase in local aid to municipalities. Over the last five years, Northampton has experienced a decrease of $3.35 million in state aid. My proposed general fund budget represents a 3% increase from fiscal year 2012. Approximately 75% of that increase is devoted to fixed costs in two categories, debt service and employee benefits. The remaining spending increases is spread across the entire budget, with the three largest discretionary general fund increases being the Northampton Public Schools, 208,000, Veterans Benefits, 185,716, and Fire Department Overtime, 130,000. The general fund budget is balanced without any non-recurring one-time revenues and is structured to reduce our reliance on free cash to backfill operating expenses during the upcoming year. 
This budget reflects my administration's commitment to funding the programs and people that provide vital services to the residents of Northampton. It also reflects my initial efforts to review city departments and functions to gain streamlined service delivery, identify opportunities for using technology to improve efficiency, and find cost savings for taxpayers. The physical budget book itself is a reflection of this approach. Shorter in length and text than previous budget proposals, it is designed to be clear, concise, and full of line item specificity to provide residents with an easy to read roadmap for how their tax dollars are being spent. Highlights of this proposed FY 2013 budget include Parking Division Reorganization. The Parking Division, formerly a standalone department, has been merged into other city departments, resulting in a reduction of two full time employees. Responsibility for maintenance of the EJ Garage, garage and other parking assets have been reassigned to the Central Services Department, which currently oversees maintenance for all other city and school facilities. Parking enforcement is merged with the parking clerk under the umbrella of the City Collector's Office, which has also begun managing the sale of parking passes. These changes allow us to provide improved customer service to residents and visitors, maintain a state-of-the-art parking system, and oversee this critical city function and revenue source more cost-effectively. Expanded regionalization of health department. Beginning in fiscal year 2013, the health department will be sharing two positions with the town of Amherst through a unique shared service agreement. The town of Amherst will employ a 40 hour a week health inspector with 20 hours of service provided to Northampton. This is a continuation of a current shared position. And the city of Northampton will employ a 40 hour a week public health nurse with 20 hours of service provided to Amherst. Under this agreement, the municipalities will exchange no money and will jointly administer the positions. Sharing employees in this way not only saves money by eliminating the need for multiple benefit eligible part time positions, but also encourages collaboration between our two health departments. Reorganization of CDBG and economic development functions. In the face of a 30% reduction in federal community development block grant CDBG funding over the last two years, this budget eliminates the Community and Economic Development Office, CEDO, created in FY 2010, and moves the two federally funded CDBG staff positions under the umbrella of the Mayor's Office. This budget also eliminates the CDBG funded CEDO director and reestablishes a dedicated city funded economic development staffer in the Mayor's Office. Moving financial and human resource data management to the cloud. Our city's financial, human resources, and payroll data are managed in MUNIS, a municipal software package we currently host locally, requiring ongoing investments in server hardware together with maintenance, troubleshooting, and backup by MIS personnel. During my brief tenure as mayor, I have seen firsthand how important city work functions can grind to a halt when the MUNIS server goes down and how critical financial data stored on the server can be threatened by major <coughs> storms and power outages. I have made the decision to move Northampton's MUNIS to a web-based system, allowing our data to be managed stably and securely off-site while eliminating future costs for server replacement as well as saving staff time, maintenance costs, and training requirements for this increasingly complex software. Addressing historically underfunded accounts and unfunded comp time liability. Yeah. To move away from over-reliance on free cash, this budget makes a commitment to increasing funding for historically underfunded accounts. Veterans benefits, $185,716. Fire department overtime, $130,000. DPW snow and ice, $100,000. And legal services, $34,335. This budget also takes a modest first step toward reducing the city's unfunded comp time liability by $38,504 beginning in the Council on Aging and Fire Department. Fire and Ambulance Budget Consolidation. 
Based on the high quality of patient care, operational capability, and financial stability demonstrated by the Northampton Fire Department in the delivery of emergency medical services to our community, the operational budget for EMS has been merged into the Northampton Fire Services budget. This consolidation brings fire department budgeting fully in line with other city departments, avoids the need to split expenses among diverse cost centers, and eliminates the need for periodic financial transfers. Providing health insurance for our employees and retirees. We began the budget planning process in January, facing a 12.5% rate increase in our renewal quote to provide health insurance to our employees and retirees. Through ongoing data analysis and negotiations with Health New England, we have been able to reduce the total rate increase down to approximately 7.4%. That represents a savings of approximately $493,372 from the initial quote. The overall increase in health care costs is still significant at over $800,000 which is why later this year I will propose that the city adopt municipal health care reform local option legislation, giving us greater ability to contain costs and the flexibility to move into the state's GIC plan if it proves advantageous. At the beginning of this year, our city went out to bond on a new police station and other capital projects totaling 19.75 <coughs> We were understandably proud that Northampton maintained its strong bond rating and achieved highly favorable interest rates. But Moody's Investor Services also cautioned us about our depleted reserves. Heeding this caution must be a focus of our work moving forward, which is why this proposed general fund budget was very purposefully built without the use of reserves in an effort to preserve and rebuild them for capital and other one-time needs. This challenge of balancing our day-to-day -day operational needs with the critical need to make long-term investments in our capital infrastructure, be it roads, buildings, equipment, or our aging systems for water, sewer, stormwater, and flood control must be addressed. Our capital planning process, scheduled for this fall, will update our five-year capital plan and prioritize project needs which we will pay for with capital stabilization funds infused by anticipated departmental turnbacks from the close of FY 2012. Our single greatest challenge, however, remains the structural imbalance between our ever-rising fixed costs and the lack of revenues to meet them. We must join voices with other cities and towns to ask our state government to provide us with either the financial resources or the local tools to adequately fund our public schools, our police and fire, our infrastructure, and all of the other vital services in our communities. I am committed to working with the city council, the school committee, city residents, and like-minded individuals in other cities and towns across the state on this important effort. I want to take this opportunity to thank those who contributed to the development and writing of this budget. First and foremost, I want to acknowledge the dedication and hard work of our city's finance director, Susan Wright. Her experience, knowledge, and prudent fiscal judgment are embedded in the pages of this budget. This mayor and our city are extremely fortunate to have Susan Wright directing our financial team. I also want to thank my staff, Lynn Simmons, for her work compiling, editing, and formatting all of this budgetary information into a clear and concise document and Kareen Philippides for organizing and managing the many budget-related departmental meetings, calls, and public forums that shaped this document. I want to also acknowledge our city department heads who worked closely with me and my staff to develop budgets for their individual departments and whose leadership and dedication to their missions make our city tick. I also thank our many dedicated employees who serve the city and its residents daily and whose sacrifices during these challenging economic times must not be overlooked and cannot be overstated. Finally, and most importantly, I want to thank the residents of Northampton for their valuable input into the creation of this budget document. I held a series of six town hall budget meetings across our city last month to outline the fiscal challenges and opportunities facing our city. And I appreciate the many people who attended these events and shared their questions, budget priorities, and ideas. 
I look forward to working with the City Council over the next several weeks to review and enact this proposed budget for fiscal year 2013. Respectfully submitted, David J. Narkowitz, Mayor. So, I would, um, I would uh, put this forward to you in the Finance Committee, um, and I guess the tradition would be that it be referred to the City Council as a whole for further study. So um, moved. Seconded. Okay. So there's been a motion made and seconded. Council. I'd also like to thank you and express my appreciation also for Susan Wright and Lynn and Corinne for their work on this. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, there was a few late nights this week. Uh, I <laughs> bet. Trying to pull this stuff all together. So it's pretty good too because you told me you were doing this just the other day. It only took oh, no. two days. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Councillor Adams. Um, I haven't obviously looked at it yet, but I did want to thank you for. What I'm seeing is the five-year trends in each department. I don't know if that was pursuant to my request, but that's, I think that's a really good addition. Thank you. And thank you for the suggestion. Uh, we're trying, again, trying to provide um, key data on trends and also, again, if you look into the budgets, we've tried to go deep into the line items, and we've also provided all the individual employees from each department and their salaries, which is also included in, in, the, uh, in the departmental budgets. Councilor. Yes, Mayor. Um, I also want to echo what Councilor Casey just mentioned. Um, I want to thank Susan Wright for being so dedicated and helping doing this budget. It's excellent. Everything is explained very thoroughly, and people really have to realize in this city, as a city councilor, I can call Susan Wright and go over any kind of financial problems I have, and she will sit with me, no matter how long I'm in there, to explain in depth of what is occurring. I want to thank Lynn, I want to thank Corrine, and Mayor, I want to thank you for doing all the budget hearings that you did throughout the wards. I've gotten many compliments about it and how thorough that presentation was. Thank you, and I guess I would be Remiss uh, if I did not mention uh, that it's also Miss Wright's birthday tonight. So it's oh. also oh. Happy birthday. Uh, city council meeting. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Barno, this is my birthday. Oh, oh. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, thank you, thank you, Miss Wright. Appreciate it. Happy birthday. Uh, is there any other? Uh, is there any other uh, uh, comments in the finance committee? Um, Otherwise, I would entertain a motion then um, to refer this out. I don't know well, if you has been, it has I think. It's already been moved and seconded. I moved seconded. And seconded. Okay. Yeah. And then I don't know if I know we're you're going to describe <laughs> later. I can we can move it out to the full meeting. Then Why don't you we do describe that? the process yeah. at that point. Yeah. So all those in favor of referring the budget to the city council as a whole for further study, say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. So that'll go out to uh, the full city council as a whole for further study. Okay, uh, uh, do we have any new business? I don't believe we have any new business in the finance Move committee. to adjourn finance, please. Okay, there's been a motion made to adjourn finance. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, uh, so finance committee is adjourned and we will now return to the regular meeting of the city council. And uh, we have now a financial order uh, that just came from the finance committee. Uh, this is upon the recommendation of the mayor and the finance committee. Uh, this is uh, for the creation, authorizing the creation of an energy and sustainability revolving fund. Does the council wish me to read the order again? No, thank you. No, thank you. Okay. Uh, so again, this is the, uh, this establishes under, uh, under Mass General Law, the energy and sustainability revolving fund. Is there a motion to approve? So to approve. Okay. Is there a second? Okay. Is there any discussion of this councilor? I have a few items here. Um, okay. I guess the. <coughs> excuse me. I, I just want to preface this by saying that I I like the idea of creating a, a revolving fund, and I um, I don't have a real problem with uh, allowing it to spend without council approval up to seventy five thousand. Uh, but I do think that there should be a accounting uh, provided uh, specifically for this fund at the end of the year. So I I'd like to add that. Uh, as an amendment that a detailed report at the end of the of the order 
that a detailed report of all expenditures will be prepared by the Director of Central Services or the Mayor and will be presented to the City Council at the conclusion of the fiscal year. Okay. Second that. So there's a that was made as an amendment, I second. Um, I, I think it'd probably be appropriate to have Chris Mason draft the report. And uh, yeah, so the right. Director of Central Services or, I mean, certainly okay. or his designee or something like that, yeah. So, um, so uh, again, um, did you get the text of that amendment? Okay, so could you restate the, um, the yeah. proposed amendment? I'll, I'll change that a little bit. A detailed okay. report of all expenditures will be prepared by the Director of Central Services or his designee, or the Director's designee, uh, and will be presented to the City Council at the conclusion of each fiscal year. Okay. So that's been a motion that's been made. Is there a second? Oh, there was a second. Okay, Councilor second. Spector, good. Okay, so we clarified that. Any further clarification? No? Is there any discussion on the amendment to the <coughs> order? Okay. All right. Hearing none, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So now we're back to the main motion, which is the, uh, the order itself. Is there any further discussion of that? Councilor? Again, um, I, I don't have a, I, I think that's a great um, thing to do. I just, I want to get. I want to ask about the process here because maybe it's. Maybe I'm having a hard time picturing what the, the kinds of proposals and I mean, what sort of projects and policies these are. Mm -hmm. um, so, could you could you describe what they might be? Because I'm just curious. It, it seems as though you would have applicants coming from both the public and the private sector. Is that correct? Uh, I think I think the reference to the uh, to the private sector was, as you know, we've been engaged in a program, Northampton Leading the Way, where we're trying to do energy efficiency for both commercial and hopefully residential. Uh, uh, and so, um, I think that was the um, I think that's the context that allows us that if we want to not only do uh, municipal but commercial and residential. So, for example, the um, uh, and I know one of the proposals that the commission has been really talking about is the uh, moving to LED streetlights, for example, mm -hmm. using some of the funds that we've recouped from these other energy projects to reinvest them in, in um, LED streetlights. I know they've discussed that as a top priority. Uh, and, uh, and so that's an example of a project. I don't believe, it's not my understanding that it would be like a private citizen petitioning them for a grant. I think it's more in the context of trying to promote residential energy improvement. Um, so, and again, the, the uh, Energy and Sustainability Commission has a, has a um, sort of work, the, the work plan that guides it is the Sustainable Northampton plan. And it goes through that work plan and tries to meet all the different goals. And so I know that, uh, that they're working on those and obviously the Green Communities has been another source of funds that they've used um, to then uh, and implement some of these measures that's now paying back some of the uh, some of the credits that they're using yes counselor uh, so let me just understand this when in the middle in the first full paragraph uh, of under the order uh, it talks about um, re, uh, the use of um, these payments will, the request will be presented to the mayor for approval on a project by project basis now are you suggesting that only the director of central services will make those requests, or will there be I believe private it's, citizens? I believe it's the NESC. I, I thought it was the ne the the commission itself that would make. Um, oh, okay. With well, the approval, she'll be authorized. To, okay, exactly. I see what you're saying. Um, but it requires the approval of the Energy and Sustainability Commission and the mayor at the at the right in order to expend the funds. Right. So uh, my sense is how this would work is. Uh, the, the city's energy officer, who serves on the on the NESC, would be, um, who, and who works primarily on these projects, would be working with the commission on these to develop these various projects, and um, and then would bring them as they're developed, would bring them forward uh, uh, for uh, to the NESC's approval and then counter approval by the mayor. Um, I think the de Depart director of central services is listed as the default person for energy programs. Um, because he's the building, uh, he's the department head, and in the event that we um, did not have an energy officer, that position was vacant, he would be the default person. I see. Yeah. Super. He supervises the energy officer. He's the direct supervisor of that department. So, 
So, so maybe the, maybe I don't understand. Maybe then I misread the sentence in the full paragraph that starts with said receipts. Mm -hmm. So, is that sentence specifying that the mayor has authority, sole authority, it looks like, to decide which payments go into this revolving fund and which do not? I'm trying to see which uh, which paragraph are we at now. The the first full under the order. Um, okay. It says said receipts will include. It's like the second sentence or third sentence in. Said receipts will include payments from the sale of renewable energy certificates and renewable energy or greenhouse gas carbon credits or other emission credits and utility rebate payments requests for which will be rescinded to the mayor for approval on a project by project. I think that just I think the request part referred to the whole mechanism of how that how those monies could be requested be spent. I don't think that meant requests to put them in the fund. Yeah. That's my that's my reading of it. Right. If I make we have a request. desk member here. Too. Yeah, that, yeah. I mean, that that's exactly what it is. It's establishing essentially a basket for the revenue that's generated from SREX. Um, all the, all the we're, there's a payoff finally for people who haven't been who, who are having trouble keeping up with the acronyms. There's there's uh, money to be realized. It's now a payback for the solar panels that are sitting on the roofs that we've been that have been installed. And by way of uh, certificates that are granted um, for essentially energy buybacks and, and the same thing with carbon offsets. So we need a fund in which to have these monies dedicated to be reinvested in, in more energy, energy and sustainability programs like deep energy retrofits, assessment of, of systems, um, or, or as, as the mayor said, for instance, we were uh, lobbying for LED lighting systems. But, but so it's a dedicated funding stream, and the revenue is generated solely from the, the, all these uh, certificates and offsets that we're getting money for that only exist due to the fact that we established this program. So there's, there's, the, so we're actually, and in fact, actually, the, we, uh, for the SREX, the, uh, the solar certificates, we actually, uh, Chris was able to get a relatively unheard price. Uh, he got a very high price for him, and he doesn't anticipate that we're going to be seeing the same price at auction all that often, but the fact is we're, we did pretty well in the last round. So that's why we're, we're, we're somewhat optimistic. I think the $75,000 is somewhat optimistic. But Councilor, you sit on this commission? I do. Um, why is the recommendation not also coming from the commission? Why is this recommendation not coming yeah. from the, the commission? I think because it's the creation of a financial, uh, you know, a, a financial, it's a financial order, and traditionally those originate, well, not traditionally, by charter they originate with the mayor uh, and, and the finance committee traditionally. So I think that's why the creation of the fund. I know it's been vetted by the the committees discussed it, and we discussed it in our off meeting of finance uh, as well, just as a preview of, of tonight's meeting. So, yes, Council. Uh, and I'm also, sorry, Susan Wright. Um, I also, there's some a timing issue day. here <laughs> because um, the SREX are going to be sold, and they're going to be sold in May, and so we have <coughs> a place for this money to go right into when it came. So. Councilor. Uh, I'd like to add it, propose one more amendment um, after the sentence in question that ends with, in the first full paragraph that ends with, presented to the mayor for approval on a project by project basis. Um, uh, the sentence would read, uh, if the mayor denies approval, the applicant may appeal to the Northampton Energy and Sustainability Commission. But there, it can we're, the, we're the ones who are making the request. request. <laughs> <laughs> well, the request right. will be coming from the energy. The well, then I'd like to specify that. Then. Okay, I, I rescind my amendment. Okay, <laughs> and I like to make another. I make amendment. So I guess I could just say to the to the NESC and the mayor for approval. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, I would. That, then, that, I would yes. Yeah. I think that was just a. I think that was just. It's inconsistent with what's in the last paragraph. So that would make it more consistent. That would be my question. Yeah. So if does that uh, so then so then you're um, you're moving to amend the middle of that yeah it's just second. add to the NESC and I'll second that. presented to the NESC to the mayor okay 
So there's a second. Um, so any discussion of that amendment? Is that the director of central services with the approval of the NESC and mayor shall be authorized to expend from the funds for the stated purposes. And the stated purposes are above. Yeah. Right. I, I, so, just to restate, okay. I think it's just clarifying what was already going to be operational, but I yep. think it's right yeah, that we should put it in there. It's just, it's just identifying it more clearly. You're going to put it in both paragraphs. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah. Makes it more. It makes it clearer that it's coming from okay. the Energy Commission. It's already in the second. Yeah, I know yeah. it's in the it's second, in the second so one. But so where do you want it in the first? It in the first just so that well, I'm not really sure. For which will be presented to the mayor. To the NESC and the mayor. To the, the NESC and the mayor for approval on a project-by-project project basis right here. Yeah. Okay, in the middle. I just couldn't see yeah. that. Okay. No, I, 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 the, way it's, the way it's written, is, it's almost as though it has to clear solely the mayor's office before it comes before the NESC. So it, if, it, if that's not the way it's going to work, and, and in fact, frankly, I'd feel comfortable if it also went through the NESC at the initial stages, and that we should put in the, in the order. Sounds good. I'd rather not have to pre-approve okay. something that I'm going to have to prove later. So, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so, all those in favor of the amendment, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Um, so, as amended, then uh, we're back to the main question: uh, the creation of the revolving fund. Uh, I'm approval. Any further? Okay. So, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Uh, abstentions. Okay. So. That will come back to you on second reading, and thank you very much. Um, then we have before you next the, upon the recommendation of the mayor and the finance committee, ordered that the sum of $115,887 be in here by is transferred from the receipts reserved account for ambulance fees. Um, and I move to approve. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. So this again is uh, the. Um, the transfers that were described by Deputy Chief Norris during the Finance Committee. Is there any discussion of these? Okay, hearing none. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, and again, this will come back to you for second reading at your next meeting. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, this is um, in just. Uh, Following the chronology here, uh, this is upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz, uh, ordered that whereas on September 18th, 2003, the Northampton City Council established a receipts reserve for appropriation fund ambulance services in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 5F, to ensure that the operation of ambulances by the Northampton Fire Department could be supported by user fees and not create an additional financial burden on the general fund and the taxpayers of Northampton, and whereas through the dedication and commitment to excellence of the Northampton Fire Department, ambulance operations have since grown into a full-time fire-based emergency medical services program offering high-quality, 24-hour-a-day emergency ambulance service to the residents of Northampton, staffed by highly trained and skilled NFD personnel, and whereas having now firmly established an ambulance service that can and does support itself financially through user fees, the original purpose of the receipts reserve for appropriation fund has been satisfied. Now, therefore, be it ordered that the City Council hereby rescinds the establishment of the receipt reserve for appropriation fund ambulance services effective July 1, 2012. To approve. Second it. Okay, there's been a motion made and seconded. Is there any further or any discussion on this? Okay. Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. That's it. So um, that concludes the financial orders. I actually have one a late file uh, ordinance uh, that I would like to bring forward. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would like to request, a, it's for a referral, I'd like to request a suspension of Rule 38. Move to suspend Rule 38. 38. Okay. Um, is that a motion? That's a motion and a second. Same. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, so this is upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz, an ordinance of the City of Northampton, um, revising Section 89-11 through 89-13, uh, deleting the... Uh, uh, Community and Economic Development Office. Um, and this is for referral, I uh, request a uh, motion to refer 
uh, to the uh, Edlu and Ordinance Committees. To refer. to refer. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? <coughs> okay. This will be referred out to those two committees. Um, and now we will move uh, back toward the end okay. of the. Uh, Mr. Mayor, didn't we cancel the Edlu meeting for this month? Uh, we did, but we would be referred to the next meeting, yes. Um, okay. So we're not going to see this till the middle of June. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Um, and the, uh, yeah, that's correct. And, it, and, you know, we would have had to have posted it anyway uh, by today prior to you referring it. So the timing would, it would have been difficult to post the meeting. So, um, so yeah, it'll come to our next Ed Lou meeting. Uh, so then. The next item following the agenda is the update from Council President and Committee Chairs. The uh, Mayor's budget has now been presented and now we get to the business of the hearings and the uh, proposed hearings for the FY 2013 budgets will be held on Tuesday, May 8th and Wednesday, May 9th from 5 to 9, both nights in the Council Chambers here. Uh, department heads have been contacted and asked to present information to the City Council at these hearings. Uh, the public is also invited to solicit, uh, submit their questions or concerns to councilors. Um, the hearings will be de televised by NCTV and I don't know if you'd like, I could read the agendas for both the meetings. Is that, is that the? Yeah. Um, okay. the, uh, the agenda for the May 8th meeting is 5 p.m. Veterans Services, 5.30 p.m. the City Clerk and the Registrar's Office, 6 o'clock will be the Department of Public Works, 6.30 will be the Recreation Department, 7 p.m. Council on Aging, 7.30 Tax Collector, 8 p.m. is MIS, which is the Computer Systems, um, 8.30 p.m., the building commissioner, and then uh, with an adjournment by 9. The, then the following day, May 9th, uh, 5 o'clock from 9 to, till 9, the 5 o'clock will be the police department, 5.30 be community and economic development, 6 p.m. will be the fire department, 6.30 p.m. will be the planning department, 7 p.m. central services department, and 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. will be discussion. And, debate if needed. I was actually going to ask, I, I had not seen the schedules that you put together to, um, well, we can discuss whether or not the Do you want to add director of CEDO to come report to you. Right, right, that's true. Certainly. So there won't be a director of CEDO, so it might not be a CEDO. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. We, <laughs> won't like we can provide information. The information on that office would be about the community. There's, not, there's no actual budgetary well, yeah. item in the, in the budget for that Will you department. be able to attend? I'll be at the meeting so we can. So it, it'd, be, it'd probably be helpful to have a discussion about the update and the prospects for the department. The information so. is also, the, the CEDO information is in the mayor's budget. It's contained. Mayor's office budget, yeah, so. So, um, yeah, um, actually looking forward to this, and these, these are public hearings, and the public is invited to attend, and it's attend to be on NCTV as well. And I, I, I forgot to mention during my presentation that this entire budget will be online tomorrow morning uh, mm -hmm. for citizens to access on the, on the website, so they'll have full access to it. NorthamptonMod.gov. Northampton, in our fair city. Northampton, Massachusetts. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, is there any other announcements uh, from the council president or any committee chairs? Okay. I move to adjourn. Second. Is there a second? It's new business. New business. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. Okay. Sorry. Was, uh, it's just so before uh, 11. It's kind of like. So, we do have. Is there any new business? Councilor uh, Tai. Uh, following the newspaper article this morning about the water and sewer rates, um, I, I think there's some type of, there's a little bit of a breakdown in communication between the conference committee and the Board of Public Works. Um, I think, I, I feel as though being on the conference committee, I was, the first thing I heard about the water and sewer rates going up was in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. And I was blindsided. Um, and rather, I, I think we need to do a little bit of restructuring <clears throat> on how we operate here. The the DPW will ask us, uh, councilors, if we have any agenda items. Well, we don't know because we're not we're not discussing what they're discussing. So it should be that the DPW should keep us informed 
better than they do. Because nobody on the, co on the conference committee knew anything about this. And website or not or whatever, we should be notified. And we were not. And it created quite an upheaval um, within the community. So I think the canceling of these conference committees is, um, I mean, they're quarterly, it's fine, but I think when something comes up, it needs to be published. We need to be known, we need to be notified about it. And we need to have a seat at that table. The, the Board of Public Works should be telling us what they're bringing up and what is on their agenda. Not us on the conference committee, not them asking us if we have any agenda items that we want to bring up, because it's, it's the conference committee. We need to know what they're thinking. We are the liaison the, between the Board of Public Works and the City Council. And if we don't know what's going on, it's not right. It, 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 it's just wrong and something needs to change there. I, I do think that if we had a better uh, communication stream between us and the Board of Public Works, I still believe that we would not have spent that million dollars on the Bradford Street pumping station because it would have come up and we would have had a discussion about the TIF that was approved and not approved and then it went however it went. But the next thing we knew, it came before the City Council that we were paying through the Board of Public Works to upgrade the Bradford Street pumping station. And that's just how it happened to play out. So I think if we had a better communication, stuff like this wouldn't happen. And I think it's incumbent upon the Board of Public Works to inform us on the City Council just what's going on and not do it without having a public, he he public even, even a public hearing process or something. Um, but I had, when this happened on the Bradford Street pumping station, I started then attending every meeting of the Board of Public Works. And I had a few questions to ask during these meetings. And then at one of the meetings, I asked a question, and the chair said, oh, and another question from our newest member of the board. So maybe they don't want us to know what's going on. So anyway, I, I'm, just, uh, I'm just letting you know how I feel. I think something needs to happen uh, in the structuring of the communication system between the Board of Public Works and this council. Council LaBarge and uh, yes um, I have great concerns of the article that was placed in the Gazette I received a call at 10 minutes to 7 this morning I did not get finished until almost quarter of four this afternoon with residents calling me in regards of this article I didn't know anything about this and it said the board last week approved a hike of 9.4% in sewer rates and 9.9% .9 in water rates. Apparently the calls that I did receive, which I did call the mayor's office, people had great concerns about our calendar in the city. And it did not have the agenda placed on the Board of Public Works. People could not find it there. So throughout the day, and I know the mayor's office took it, at, took it really serious about it not being placed there. There was a problem, and um, I have residents who are feeling, because of not knowing about that board hearing, that they felt that they were being shut off, there was no communication with the public, and I feel it's very very important when you're looking at going up on these rates up into the year of 2018 that the taxpayer should have the rights to have a hearing and be able to say how they feel about these increases and I, I, I just feel I believe that they're right about this so I'm asking our mayor if he could talk to the director of the Board of Public Works and please have an open public hearing, even though they voted on it and because it was not on the web, to give our taxpayers, and you're talking about communication, you're talking about best practices. To me, I feel, and many residents, that this is very detrimental here. They are the ones that are paying this and that 
they should have the opportunity to be heard, even though it's been voted on. And I feel that the Board of Public Works, they did apparently send it to the right channels to have it posted, and there was something that was not placed on there, so they didn't have access to it. So I'm asking as a counselor, because of people talking with me throughout the day, that at least they have the opportunity to say how they feel about that increase for the next six and a half years. Councilor Spector. I think there's, I think the, what I'm hearing is the message and I agree with both counselors. One is the general community, we're encouraging you to speak with uh, the DPW and encourage them to have both better communication with the public, which is a, a specifically on this, but also I agree with Councillor Tacey that we should be given more information because we are one of the avenues on that joint committee that if something is going to come up, I guess to say to you and if you communicate to the, uh, to the department head there that he should be coming forward on any issues at all that he thinks are going to uh, be at all controversial or even ones that aren't and then our chair with our advice could decide whether or not we need to discuss them. But I agree with you, Councillor Tasty. We, yes. we need those to come forward to see all the issues that are coming forward. And then, you know, I trust your judgment on those in terms of this scheduling of meetings and talking with us about it. Well, let me just say a couple of things. First off, I'm not the chair. I was last term, but I'm not well, the chair. That's term. right. Also, um, <laughs> I agree generally. With, with Does it rotate? <laughs> Does it rotate between? Yes, it rotates. One, one year it's a deep uh, member. Next year it's a counselor. So and this year it's the BPW. That's right. The, yes. yes. It's, uh, <laughs> and I'm actually not the chair this term, but just a couple of things I want to point out. I agree generally with what's being spoken, but um, those meetings are, are, are by ordinance, they're quarterly. Um, so when we get those notices that say canceled on the off months, they're actually not canceled. It's just that by ordinance, you're not supposed to meet. And when I was, and when I was chair, every single month, I sent out a request asking if anybody on the board wanted a meeting. And for, I was chair for two years. So no, no one ever requested one once on an off month. So, you know, I mean, and we, we, so we, you know, and so we should, we have to keep our eyes open a little bit too here because no one ever once requested one when I sent out that request. But, uh, but I agree that, um, for, for issues like this, especially, you know, an issue that's going to affect, affect people's wallets, that the department itself should should come to us and say this should be discussed because they know better than we do. I didn't know about it either until I read the paper today. I think we have Councillor Freeman Daniels. I concur with almost everything being said. I've talked before about how I think the City Council needs to approve all water and sewer fees, but I don't believe this new business. I, uh, I, I tend to agree, but I was allowing the Council the purview to um, to have this discussion. Um, is there any other items under new business, <laughs> Casey? Well, actually, it's uh, it's an extension of the same one, which I do believe is new business. Uh, well, I do and <clears throat> in 2002, when our rates went up 22 and a half percent, they've gone up 10 percent every single year since then. And that 10 percent that went up, the 22 and a half percent went up in 2002. Don't forget, and when it went up 10% in 2003, it's more than 32% because it's 10% over the long way, 22.5%. By the time you get to now, it's about 114% up to date. And this last of $130 equals more than an override. More than, so anyway, what I'm getting at is the people need to be informed and this stuff needs to happen in the public and it amounts to an override every single year. Though I agree with the Councilor, I, I do agree this should be discussed, but since we should set set agenda my item for it, we should discuss in conference and I, I and again I, I'll I will be happy to communicate these this message to the Department of Public Works. Um, and I think it would be behoove also I think the conference committee should probably reach out to your counterparts and uh, for some also some communication around this as well. But I'll Thank you. Is there any other new business? Uh, hearing none, I will. Uh, motion made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 